Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today I'm gonna to talk about some of the frustrations that I've been having with the iPhone for quite some time. And I'm afraid that they may not change because I've been utilizing the iOS 14 beta for a while now, and these problems were persistent even before on iOS 13. So I don't know necessarily what's going to happen or what's going to change, but being that the new iPhone is gonna be announced in probably the next couple of weeks, I wanted to put this video out there and talk about them. I know that I'm not alone in these frustrations because sometimes I do tweet about my frustrations or I post about them somewhere and I get responses. I also see other people talking in their YouTube videos and hear what they have to say, and I know that I'm not alone with all of these frustrations. So I'm gonna talk about five of the frustrations that are the biggest issues that I have right now with the iPhone, and I don't know if that necessarily means that I'm going to go Android for a while or not, but right now they're frustrations and they're things that bother me, so we're gonna talk about them. Number one is apps not persisting in the background. These days with how good the phones are getting, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, with the processors and the memory and the battery life and optimization of software, if I go from one app to another and then back to that app, that app should not have to reload or refresh. Uh, and that can be very frustrating when I'm trying to maybe work on a photo and then go over to social media to share it and I already have something typed out in the social media app. I go back to make another change to the photo and then I go back to the social media app and it reloads and I lose everything that I typed in. That happens to me all the time on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which should be the iPhone that shouldn't have these issues because it's the most expensive and the one with the most power. So with that said, it's very frustrating. When I go between photo editing apps or text apps or whatever, it seems that the phone just does not do a good job of keeping persistent activities in the background. It shuts them down way too fast. And I know that uh, some of these things can be fine-tuned and it's definitely been, uh, there's been a lot of changes with that with iOS 14 beta, but we are getting to the end of the road with beta to where iOS 14 should be as close to finished as possible uh, and, and I'm not seeing any changes there really. And I know that this isn't just a problem with the beta on my other iPhone that runs iOS 13 and also on my iPad which still runs uh, iPad, the, the I guess the first version of iPad OS, but iPad OS 13, I have those problems. If I go between a couple of apps or spend even a minute in another app and then go back, I've lost my work unless I click save or it is some sort of an app that does save your process. And a lot of these apps are not very good at that, uh, so you end up losing your work. Another issue that I have with the iPhone, this would be the second one, is slow LTE speeds. The LTE used to be really good on the iPhone. It was on par with everything else. But now that a lot of networks are implementing some variation of 5G, even though it is a lower speed 5G, not the millimeter wave that we will potentially all get, but with the LTE speeds, it's slow. And here in Montana, where internet is just a little bit slower than everywhere else, it's really bad. And if I move over to my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, there is some lower end 5G here and it is significantly faster than my iPhone. Uh, and then also if I go to bigger cities, of course, the LTE is fast because LTE is fast in those bigger cities. Like when I'm in San Jose or San Francisco or uh, a bigger town, um, I get good speeds but I get even better speeds on the Android. And so we'll see what's gonna happen with the new version of the iPhone. I've been reading a lot into it and it looks like it's going to be kind of choked back a little bit because in reality, there isn't a lot of 5G throughout the United States. But the fact is where I'm at right now and where I was before when I lived in California, there was some 5G and it was much faster on an Android phone than on the iPhone. So in those locations where things are a little bit more remote. I'm just not getting the performance that I should be getting these days. Um, and that's frustrating. And I don't know how well that's going to improve with the next iPhone. I know that with the iPhone 11, it's definitely frustrating. 
So number three is uh, just the lackluster ultra wide camera on this uh, on this phone. The ultra wide does a decent job, but it gets beat by pretty much every other ultra wide on a flagship or if you have a GoPro or something like that, it, it, it just beats it. The ultra wide camera on this phone is nice. I love having the ultra wide. I was very frustrated when the Pixel 4 uh, XL did not have an ultra wide. So I do love having an ultra wide and I'm glad it's there, but the image is not very sharp. It's very distorted and the color accuracy just isn't as good as the other cameras. And I just, I don't like using the ultra wide on this phone because it doesn't produce a good image. Now, I didn't used to find this as a complaint. But as I've used other phones and started to use my DJI Osmo Action a little bit more, I've realized that the ultra-wide camera on the iPhone just really isn't that good. And so the images aren't sharp, and if the images aren't sharp, I don't like to use them. I don't want to, uh, and so I choose something else over the iPhone. So number four is password management nightmares. I absolutely hate password management on the iPhone. I've been a user of 1Password for ages, and I want to continue to use 1Password. On the iPhone, of course, they're trying to push you to use uh, the iCloud keychain password management, and that works pretty good as long as you are only using Apple apps. When you start to use other apps, the experience starts to fall apart. And I know that Apple is implementing their Apple single sign-on solution that is that some companies have rolled out into their apps, which is great. It works really good when you have that, but most have not. And so using password managers on the iPhone is a multi-step process because you have to choose which password manager, then you have to search within the password manager. Most of the time, one password these days doesn't even uh, I have to search for the name of the app because for whatever reason it can't read what app I'm in because probably of the extra step that it takes just to get to the password manager and it's very frustrating. If I'm using Google Chrome as my browser, passwords take forever to show up and I don't know if that's something that Google has uh, an issue with and the iPhone or if it is the iPhone slowing down that process to make it a more enjoyable process if you use Safari. I don't know what it is, but password management is a nightmare and it has not been fixed in iOS 14 beta. It is still a problematic deal and it's so much easier to password manage on Android devices than it is an iPhone. Uh, I'm sure it will get better with the iPhone, but Apple does their thing where they hold it in tight and they want it to work the best with Apple apps and uh, Apple software, Apple devices and stuff like that. Obviously storing all of your passwords in iCloud is not gonna be a great experience if you need to access your passwords elsewhere. And actually getting to your passwords and searching for them when you want to use them in another environment is a real pain. Having a cross-platform password manager like 1Password means that it doesn't matter what type of device I'm on or where I'm at, I can access all of my passwords and I don't have to jump through a whole bunch of Apple hoops, which is frustrating. Number five, the UI of the iPhone is old and boring. Now, of course, with iOS 14, there's some changes. They added some folders and added a alphabetical list of your apps but it's really, it's really still so far behind uh, Android and the ability to customize. I, uh, you know, I've been used to for so long just foldering my apps and having them organized the way that I want. And then with iOS 14 having its own folders that you can't really customize and you can't label and apps show up in folders that don't really make sense and it batches apps together that I typically wouldn't go searching for together. It's just frustrating. And I don't wanna have my own folders and then have the iOS folders as well. It's just kinda lame. And if I wanna to get to the alphabetical list, it's a multi-step process to get to the alphabetical list because it's so hidden. There's no easy way to like swipe up or tap a button and get access to that like app drawer like you have on Android. So I do love the fact that there's an alphabetical list, that's great, and I do love the fact that there is some sort of dynamic foldering system that they have implemented, but it is not, it's just not good. Uh, I still have to have apps in my own folders. There are apps that I'm using way less on iOS 14 because I forget that I have them. 
they're buried deep in some folder that I never would have put them in. And unless I go to my alphabetical apps list and look at all of my apps, which I have a lot of apps on my phone, then I'm, oh yeah, I have that app and I should use it. Or, oh, I installed that game because I wanted to try it or something like that. And it's just buried. Uh, you still can't customize the UI hardly at all. Of course, widgets are coming in iOS 14 and those seem neat and really promising. And I'm excited to see what app developers do with widgets for their own apps because I haven't been a widget user on Android. I just don't like the widgets. I feel like they were cool and then nobody really paid attention to them. And so there just hasn't been uh, much good you know, movement and development on Android widgets. So maybe now with Apple doing it, uh, app developers will create some really useful widgets and that will renew my thoughts on this but still the UI is still extremely boring it has not changed much even with the advent of the things that I just talked about here so far so I'm not excited about the UI I think that Apple really needs to just innovate and come up with something new uh, albeit when they do that it's going to rock a lot of people because people are used to the UI and you don't want to change things too drastically but it is what it is I got a bonus one here. The sixth thing that actually bothers me about the iPhone is that whenever I go and get in my truck and turn it on and CarPlay connects to my phone, it starts playing music from the Apple Music app. And I don't use the Apple Music app. I don't have an Apple Music subscription. And I do have music in Apple Music that is not downloaded to my phone, but it will start playing from the top of the alphabetical list, which is like, Charlie Brown's A Christmas something or other. And so I get in my car, I turn it on, and then all of a sudden it's that Charlie Brown Christmas music, and I cannot get it to stop doing that. There is no way for me to get around it. It does that all the time. The only way that it won't do it is if I had previously used Spotify and Spotify is still open, or a podcast app was still open on my phone, but if I close the app, and then come back to my truck and get in the truck, turn on the truck, plug in the phone, then I get Charlie Brown's Christmas and it's extremely frustrating. Of course, Apple is always gonna force us to use their apps, but there needs to be a way to tell it to stop doing that, especially if you don't use your phone or don't use that app on your phone for music, uh, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I don't wanna talk bad about the iPhone and just badger it. Uh, it's a great phone and I find myself going to the iPhone quite often even when I switch to another phone. So I don't want to knock the iPhone completely. It is a fantastic device. It works well. There's a lot that it does and there's a reason why I always end up going back to my iPhone even when I get a new shiny Android phone in. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. So do you have any frustrations uh, with the iPhone currently? And what are those? Share those with me down in the comment section below. This is supposed to be a video where I'm hopeful that these things get rectified and changed. We talk about them so that Apple hears us and they fix these problems. I'm not knocking the iPhone at all. It's still one of the most fantastic uh, devices ever created in all of time. And so with that said, let's talk about it down in the comment section below. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon because we've got lots of iPhone and Apple Watch and even iPad, I think, stuff coming up soon. We're gonna be talking about it. I don't want you to miss it. So click that bell and we'll see you back in the next video. Take care.